Hi, and thanks for joining us for the launch of 3CX 15.5. I'm Nick Gallia, and I'm going to kick off with a brief presentation of the key new features, followed by a live Q&A session with the 3CX team. 15.5 has many new features, however, it's entirely based on the tried and tested V15 architecture. So this is an easy upgrade. No reinstallation is required. The update can be done in place from the management console. Hence, we've named it 15.5. The biggest feature is a web client with a modern UI. Fast, secure, and easy to deploy across any OS. The web client is built on the most modern web technologies available, ensuring security and scalability. We've optimized it for open standards browsers, Chrome, Firefox, although it works on Edge as well. An under the hood change is that IP phones are now controlled via UACSTA rather than HTTP. More about that later. 3CX's smartphone clients can now also be remote controlled. The new web client will be our client of choice and will receive most updates in future. However, the Windows and Mac clients will be maintained too because native apps are still the best option for soft phone use. So let's take a look at a client. As you can see, it has a modern look similar to the management console. The main screen shows the presence of all extensions and supports photos. In the top right corner, users can set their current status. Temporary statuses can also be used. These will revert automatically after, for example, 30 minutes. Clicking on their profile image, users will find all options in regards to their account. The aim is to allow users to self-serve and alleviate the administrator of the system. So the web client is not just a pretty face. It also includes more reliable and improved desk phone and soft phone control. First off, cloud deployments and remote extensions are now supported. 3CX soft phones can be controlled too, which is handy when on the road or at home working from a laptop. All of this is possible using the UA CSTA standard. It does require an update to the latest phone firmware and clients, all of which can be deployed with a few clicks thanks to the 3CX remote firmware deployment feature. Inbound call notifications show caller details and allow for easy transfer, including attended transfer. With Office 365 integration, if a caller ID matches a contact, it can be opened from the incoming call pop-up without installing any plugins. Set up a conference call with a few mouse clicks. This process has been greatly streamlined. One of the features that I personally like is the integrated web meeting. Since the client is now web-based, you can start a video conference just from the client. Just click on the web meeting link and add participants. Video conferencing is a great, unique selling point of 3CX and its usage is increasing rapidly. The switchboard is now integrated into the client and the look has been streamlined. There are more configuration options and as you can see from the queue view, the information is presented in a much cleaner way. Another requested feature was a web-based wallboard. This is now included and you can configure which queues to view and expand them into a separate tab or browser. We will be adding more wallboard views in the future, including a leaderboard. The contacts page has been improved as well. It not only looks better, but also allows for importing and deleting of all contacts at once. And we're working on better integration with the desk phone contacts. In the pro version, you have full server-side synchronization between Office 365 and 3CX. Users do not need to enter their account details client-side. Also included is a better chat interface. Besides the new look, we've added push functionality for the iOS and the Android clients, meaning users will be notified upon receiving a message. Expect more features to arrive to the chat client. We are aware that many corporations want the business chat functionality and it's a pity for them to have to pay and administer a separate solution. Let's take a quick look at the call history 
voicemail and recording screens, whose look and feel has been revamped for better usability. Our click to call browser extension has been improved and now works with leading CRM systems and Office 365 without installing any plugins. Building on our Deploy Anywhere strategy, 15.5 can now easily be installed on appliances built on mini PCs of leading brands Intel, Zotac, Shuttle and Gigabyte. These mini PCs are available worldwide with local service and at a price point far lower than proprietary PBX appliances. A PBX appliance makes sense in small offices without an existing server. Of course, 15.5 can be deployed in the cloud with our PBX Express tool. And we recently added more supported hosters, including one and one The VAD is back. Bigger and better and with a new name, Call Flow Designer. It's more performant and has the ability to trigger outbound calls. And it's now free as part of the Pro Edition. We also made the following improvements. We integrated the hotel module, so it's built into 3CX. No separate download or installation necessary. It works seamlessly with cloud and on-premise installs, regardless of platform. And best of all, it's included in the Pro Edition, drastically reducing the cost for most hotel installations. We added fax over G711 support. We added support for Google Firebase Push. Firebase is the new way for Google to deliver push messaging and it's now commercially supported by Google. Newer Android phones will only support Firebase Push and so an upgrade of the 3CX server is required. We can output PDF reports in the Linux version as well now. And to achieve PCI compliance, companies needed a way to pause call recording to take credit card details. This is now possible while still keeping one recording file. We've added a global network of download servers. 3CX's rapid increase of installed base meant that our download servers were overworked. And last but not least, a multi-line TAPI driver for terminal server environments. And something linked to 15.5 is a brand new partner and customer portal with the ability to monitor all your 3CX installs whether on-premise or in the cloud, from one central dashboard. You can see the following stats for each installation. Free disk space, number of extensions, whether extensions have insecure passwords, if backups are being taken and when the last backup was. And we're planning to add call monitoring as well. So that's 15.5 for you. And now for the live Q&A with Nick and Stefan. Hi again and uh, welcome to this live q and I have with me Stefan Walter, Head of Support, Nikki Borg, Product Manager and we're happy to answer your questions. Please post them to the comment system and we'll try and answer as much as we can. So let's start with... Hi guys, thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to have our first question here. The CFD, maybe. Yes. You can, uh, uh, up here. Yeah, the VAD now comes with a new name and uh, we've worked a lot on the, um, uh, and for, to be able to deliver voice applications into the management console. They will be served by the queue manager. And uh, the CFD is very powerful because all the scripts are being built at the, at the development level time. So when you import the new voice application package into the management console, the queue can already start working with it and the CFD starts to do uh, telephony functions like the dialing functions and other telephony operations you'd need in a call center. Okay, when do you think we can uh, release the CFD? It's looking roughly? like we're going to have um, one, one more month, one, one more, in one month's time, we'd have a good version out which will, have, which will be fully complete 
um, with all the features we need. Okay. Um, so, earlier question, if I may grab yeah. it, uh, regarding uh, DND and Yelling phones. DND yeah. uh, in 15.5 is uh, completely revamped. Uh, a request which always came in is that when I select in my web client or 36 phone a DND status, why is it not reflected on my IP phone? When you go to 15.5, you will see that the DND synchronizes both ways. And that's done via the new technology we use as well for initiating calls, which is called UAC. yes. Uh, maybe you want to go a little bit Yeah, UACSTA is a very intelligent way and an upgrade to what we traditionally know as CTI. So CTI is web-based, so therefore uh, you get into problems of port forwarding and how you get a web, uh, an HTTP packet driven to the phone. But UACSTA is different because we already uh, engage the SIP uh, forwarding rules at the uh, firewall level to make SIP work. So your existing network infrastructure is already in place. So we'd use uh, notify and update messages, already part of the SIP protocol, to be able to drive and control the phone. Like we can do operations like answer, uh, forward, terminate, end, and the question why all this came up is DND, DND sync, which is extremely powerful because you can sync your state together with the application state and whatever you have configured on your uh, client. Um, before we had some uh, uh, we, we, uh, the, the DND state was not always in sync because uh, the phone would do it locally and then the messages come and uh, the phone would respond. Now everything is done at server level. So that's a very big advantage for UACSTA. Um, yeah. May I pick that course, yeah, the right. same thing? Yeah. Uh, the question from uh, Tech Stitches uh, in the USA uh, with a question regarding when an SPC will be posted where the client behind also supports USCSDA. I think the uh, release of this will be made uh, also very soon, right? Yes, yes. Uh, internally, we have that already working, so it will be just a matter of a couple of days. I'm going to answer a question about the hotel module. As I mentioned in the presentation, the question is, is it included as part of 3CX? Yes, it is. Uh, it's included with the Pro Edition. So for most hotels, it's going to be a big reduction in cost. We also had a question about the hot desking. I'll go ahead and answer that as well. Uh, hot desking is not in 15.5. It's still on our radar. It's something uh, we still need to do a bit more research for. It's something we wish to do, but we can't give an exact delivery date. Yeah? Um, you want to do? I have a question from Yannick here. Nydik, ODBC with Linux possible now? Uh, not yet and uh, won't be because uh, it depends on uh, .NET Core and when .NET standard files and uh, libraries will be available for ODBC. Microsoft has done nothing on this yet for ODBC. But let me add up. Mm -hmm. so. I think our strategy for that will be to support, uh, we're going to bring out a server-based CRM uh, solution which will interface with pretty much any REST API out there. And I think that's the way to go if you wish to query numbers and resolve them to customer names. Uh, we're going to go with a server-based CRM which should then work, could be easily configured with any REST-based API. I think that will replace ODBC. Uh, yes, and the uh, other protocols like LDAP with, um, uh, and will replace them with uh, modern REST-based um, APIs from popular CRM uh, solutions. You want to do the PMS for the... Yeah, main status. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, a question um, fly by wire in Belgium. PMS integration on 15.5. We don't have a made IVR yet, yes. We're going to make made codes. Uh, the made codes will be much simpler to configure. They will be uh, static and uh, according to standards of MITRE and Fidelio. And uh, they're coming soon, yes. We're coming in the, in the last version of the hotel module. For now, um, in the, the, for now, the hotel module has the following features, PMS integration, but check-in, check-out functions and the receptionist view will come soon. From the web interface? From the web client, yeah. Web client. So not a dedicated uh, install or... No, the, yeah. the web client will have a new view, which will uh, enable hotel specific functions. Check-in, check uh, check-out. Check you want to... You want to ask this well, So is the VAT already available today? Well, to, to clear it, yeah. maybe one more right. time up. Uh, the application which was called VAD, Voice Application Designer, has been renamed uh, to yeah. Call Flow Designer. 
CFD and you can download it already as a beta version uh, with uh, great support on the forums and on our ticket system if you have any question in the operation and as I said earlier roughly a month till the final release of the product. We've got a question here. Um Transferring to 15.5 from version 14, we started using the 36 FQDN. We're seeing a much higher amount of unwanted traffic that, are, that is, that is uh, triggering the anti-hacking module. Well, it's not because it's a 36 FQDN, it's because the FQDN um, uh, was, uh, had the, the early betas where uh, you were, were declaring the FQDN and made it searchable by Google search engine. So, uh, they could see your FQDN and your FQDN was becoming much more popular than the FQDN you had before. Now in the latest version and updates, um, we have corrected this and uh, Google search engine and crawlers will not get your FQDN. Good. Um, we have a question here, click to call, as it was in version 14, uh, we're, when will it be in 15.5? Uh, basically we're still working on that, it's not a simple feature. Uh, with the architecture change, it's one of those things that needed to be redone. We're working on it. Um, basically, there's going to be a video MCU in the product. And this will bring back the click-to-call functionality uh, that you can click from a, on a website and the call will be, will be delivered to your phone system directly. So we need definitely a few more months for this, uh, maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, I would like to answer yeah. a question from Christian. Yeah, right. um, if the templates for SNOM M300 and M700 are integrated in the product, uh, they were more or less with the release of 15.0 already integrated, but you don't find them at extension level anymore, you find them in a special section we made, we call them a little bit internally, multiple home devices, which contain by one IP address more than one extension. You find them in the menu on the side, uh, underneath the section FXS decked, uh, from there you provision the device one time and you can assign the extensions to the device as you want, you can change them, you can remove them, add, delete uh, for easier management, especially in the M700, which I believe in the latest firmware can take up to 1000 extensions now. There's a question to the, from Jimac. Will there be an option to, to disable the chat feature? Well, the chat feature can already be disabled and you can also block users. And you can also enable server-side reading of chats for the administrator to read conversations. Uh, or uh, or not. So um, there are various options to disable chat if you want from within the web client and administratively. We've got a lot of questions about uh, PCI compliance and recording. So what's in version 15.5 right now is the ability to pause the recording, but you still get one recording file. This is needed for a PCI compliance when, uh, when, a, when an agent is taking a credit card number, for example. So this is possible. It doesn't, at this point yet, auto-detect taking of uh, credit card numbers. Um, you want to take the 302? No. Well, there's, uh, there's something more interesting oh, yeah, that just pops in. Yeah. Is, uh, is there a way to randomize the music on, uh, uh, music on hold per call or call parking, like in fit, um, 15, well, but uh, playlist is back with 15.5, um, the feature which we had in version 14 once. Um, you configure it uh, normally over the settings, music on hold, and you see a new tab where you can combine now multiple music on hold files which can be played in sync or randomized, and you can add them in music on hold, share parking, queues, so everywhere basically the PBX is in the need to stream music for you. Um, the only feature I think, and uh, for the processing power, and I saw a big thread on the forums about it, the line-in feature um, is such an overhead of uh, converting the streams live that this is something not really suitable uh, for PBX, which has a bigger scale to do. Yeah, exactly. Plus, a line-in technology doesn't really match with a cloud-based virtual instance, right? Yeah. I've got here a question. The native client is still better to use than the web client. Um, from uh, Brian Arnold. Um, well, no, what I meant by that was that the web client is our client of choice for driving your IP phone, for checking the, the presence, because it just offers more, uh, more screen space to do things more in a more organized way. However, if you want to use a soft phone, so you want to use the client as a soft phone, it's much better to use the Windows client because they're just that native uh, integration with the operating system 
and that uh, offers that additional reliability. So when you want to use a soft phone, use a 3CX uh, Windows client. If you're driving your IP phone, yes, I'd say use the web client. But of course, in 15.5, you can still use both. So you can have the web client and drive your soft phone, either your Android or your iPhone, or even your Windows soft phone. But I tend to agree that, yes, the web client has some uh, uh, evident advantages over the native clients. First of all, when it comes to scalability, you can update the clients very easily. It's browser-based. Um, we're using Angular technology, which is, uh, in, by definition, faster, as it has some features, like uh, ahead-of-time compiling, where the compilation is done one time, ahead of time, for all users, as opposed to how it was before with just-in-time compilation, where it used to be compiled for each user every time. So we can already see this immediate rendering uh, within the 3CX web client today. Uh, so I, I would even go further and say, like, for big installs with uh, Microsoft Active Directory driven uh, Windows environments, uh, the need to install the software may can be erased Absolutely. if you want to use a 36 phone or you don't use a 36 phone. But especially the upgrade process you needed to do to keep the phone in sync with the PBX is done now on server level. So the PBX will be updated on server level and each user using the web client automatically benefits without any post-installation client side from these uh, features. Over and above that, we're using WebSocket technology. So we're taking advantage of what the browser already has for us to create this communication channel between the server and the client. Message passing, it's message driven. So there, is, there, are, there, is, there are less callbacks. Callback hell is less. So it's faster and even also the, the driving force is by listeners listening and subscribing to messages, making it much faster. Maybe as well, just to clean it up, the, the web client over the 36 phone, the whole USCSDA driving is done purely in the web client. So if you're using any of our supported phones, the new method of driving your IP phone, yeah. which is seemingly the same if it's a remote stun extension, SPC extension, local extension, if you have routed internal networks, is all done via the uh, web client. The Windows client, in comparison in CTI mode, is still as it used to be before in HTTP and it drives in HTTP your IP phones and um, will it be changed? I no, I think, think the, I think the new stuff will go to the web yeah, client. Yeah. Web client will be the client of choice to drive your IP phone and that's where we're going to focus on uh, CTI integration. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Gapman CA asks, last one on the web client, but can you make a call with the web client? With the web client on its own, no. You need uh, you need to, you need to pair it and to communicate it with your IP phone, or with your soft phone, or with your iPhone, iOS client, and Android clients. To add to that, though, um, there will be uh, a development that with using WebRTC, you'll be able to make calls directly from the web client, but that's still something uh, under development, and we still think that, as we mentioned, the native app or an IP phone is better for, for phone calling. I'd like to also have answer the question uh, from uh, Mr. Schreutz. Will 3CX be supplying their own SIP trunks? No, will not. Uh, the reason being is that we feel that it's very important to focus and do what you do best. And in our case, that's making um, IP PBX software. So we're going to focus on that. But what we are working on, a big project, uh, is to support more and more uh, VoIP providers and especially a lot of tier one uh, VoIP providers and there are a lot of new voice platforms uh, becoming available on the internet that offer very low cost calling and we're, we're starting a big uh, development there to support more but also make it much easier to configure so maybe you can have some more information about yes, uh, that. On, well on the roadmap uh, it's a bit longer task we all have put on uh, our pipeline to do is to make the whole management for the user and the administrator streamlined. For example, a common request we see in support is what is my outbound call ID? Do I support clip no screening? Can I do a number suppression? All these questions are understood by persons who have used the work provider numerous times, yeah? But in the case you are just basically making your first install, you're going with work provider A, B or C. Uh, you will come off these hurdles. So we are going to a num number planning inside the PBX, which will all do that work for you. Uh, we are reducing the information you need to put in the management console to make a VoIP provider work. Um, we have at the moment roughly 12 applications from 12 t uh, tier 1 VoIP yeah. providers. We are working it to ship them as soon as possible out to you, so you can get to that. 
because at the moment what we see rapidly in the market is the price is decreasing for DIDs, yeah. international calling numbers, and so on. Yeah, so continue on, on the PBX Express concept, just have your PBX ready as quickly as possible. We're going to add this VoIP provider step as well, uh, but always with any VoIP provider available in the market rather than our own. We don't want to tie you down in any way. Uh, which one do you want to ask? There, there was a question just before regarding from CJ about the iOS push client and yeah. uh, Android, uh, if they are comparable. Well, I think they can never be compared to each other because they're using just two different platforms, a little bit like Windows Mobile Phone, if you want yeah. to add it in the mix. And uh, <laughs> iOS has okay. enabled us with uh, iOS 10 the ability to basically present incoming calls in exactly the same way as you would expect in GSM call, which is for the user, the, I think, the most desirable way. Yeah. Because he doesn't need to learn, I need to swipe right, door left, I need to do some 3 sex uh, propriety way. It works exactly as you get a GSM call. We can toggle between GSM and normal SIP calls as you would do in the office or from your GSM uh, client as well. So I think it is uh, superior in the way what it uh, does um, over all the versions we had in the, in the past. There was a question earlier, uh, is Edge supported? Well, Edge is supported, Edge works. Uh, I would use Edge for only one reason, yes? You'd install Windows, it comes with Edge, and that use it to download Chrome. <laughs> After that, <laughs> you can use the apply. I mean, yeah, you can use Edge if you want. It has some uh, um, defects in the UI, uh, but uh, if you want to use Edge, you can. However, it doesn't work with the video conferencing. You uh, need yes, an open standards browser. Yes. Uh, to, do, uh, to do video conferencing, so that means Firefox or Chrome. Yes, so when you go to the web client and on an Edge browser, you'd see, uh, you, you won't see anything related to web to see. Um, quickly here, Dundat posted a question, I think twice, uh, regarding shared line appearance, if that can be any way expected. Well, there is the form of short, uh, shared line experience uh, since, oh God, when did we started with the shared parking orbits? Uh, yeah. version 12, uh, which sort of does exactly the same. If you haven't tried it out, configure a shared parking orbit BLF on your IP phone or your 3CX phone and uh, press the button and you will see all the same extension which monitor the same line, which de facto is shared line experience, will basically provide the same functionality for you without the overhead of uh, configuring or reconfiguring IP phones to support mm -hmm. it as such. Um. Should we uh, PBX Express about Azure? Yeah. You know about it? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a common request we get yeah. uh, if uh, what the next providers will be, which we currently will uh, add to PBX Express. After the start we had with uh, Google, Google Cloud Service, uh, then followed OVH, uh, then had we got Amazon, the latest edition was yeah. one in one. Um, which offers a data center in Germany and in Spain, which is uh, for some of our customers very important to use uh, locality based. Um, hoster. I think the next common one would be uh, Azure, where the question mm -hmm. comes uh, quite regular to support it. Yeah, the problem is that Azure is extremely expensive, so okay, we're not sure if we can support Azure yet because it does things slightly different from other providers, but if it could be. But having said that, I would go with some of the options we've already found because actually the price, because of the, the cost of the data at Azure, it becomes extremely expensive to use a PBX on Azure, so that's just a word of caution. Azure. I have a question from Simon JH88. Recording compressions, your recording are huge. Yes. So we tried first to compress the recording and we managed to make it four times smaller, yes. But it wasn't playing via the browser. So Google Chrome, for example, would not play this recording because of the bitrate and the compression. Um, so we had to revert back to the normal compression. Anyway, it's like one megabyte for each one minute of recording. I think in today's uh, world it's okay to have it. Yeah. Um, uh, and, we can, and, and with that, you can gain to be able to play this recording from everywhere, from Android, from Google, from every, from every browser. Got a question from Abel Joy about 3CX supporting DDNS. Maybe that's a good one for you, Stefan. Uh, yeah, well, the question is supporting or not supporting. This is, I think, not really the right question in this sense. Yeah. Uh, if you have a dynamic IP and have a need for DUN DNS addresses or FQDNs, you can just use a 3CX FQDN which has this functionality built in. So if your public IP addresses changes basically, uh, it reports it to our system and we're going to update your DNS record. However, that being said, uh, for a PBX to work behind a dynamic IP address and now depending on how often your provider changes these, 
You put a massive burden, not just on the PBX, but also all users connecting remotely to your system. Meaning, we have a DNS record which points to IP address A, this changes. There will be a service interruption for the user until the records are all updated. We don't have control of all DNS servers in the world caching the IP addresses which may result in a, to a service loss of this person in the remote location and then in the end you will have an unhappy customer or unhappy user. Therefore, it's always recommended let the PBX run on a static IP address. If you don't have one in your office, park in the cloud, use PBX Express. These machines all come with dedicated public IP addresses for your use. Yeah. If you're not using a static public IP, then you must also accept the fact that if your IP changes, there might be an hour or more until DNS propagation occurs worldwide of downtime. If you can live with that, it's okay. We've got a question uh, here from Leonor Cousteau. Do you have a 3CX certified list of video cam for web meeting room? Actually, we don't. Uh, the reason is that uh, actually the cool thing about WebRTC is that you can use any uh, meeting room cameras uh, that actually work with Windows or Mac because they will connect into uh, Google Chrome and it will work as a, um, as a, video, a conferencing video solution. And the good thing about it is that they are much less expensive than traditional uh, meeting room uh, cameras. Ah, here is one of them. Yeah, so this is one the picture at the moment. <laughs> this is one we actually use to make this our webinars. Yeah. Uh, when you have seen our academy or Nicolas Paz doing our online trainings, yeah. meetings, mm -hmm. this is the webcam mm -hmm. of choice mm -hmm. we use. Uh, comes with a remote control feature, a blip yeah. which can follow you. Uh, audio is recorded uh, with a different station. Um, that's uh, full HD. Can follow you as well. Can follow you, yeah, you zoom in, zoom out. So this is our regular choice, but there many out of them. Yeah. Uh, as long as basically your Windows detects them more or less without any special drivers, you're good to go. Yeah, so... so now, um, we've not, now we've not encountered any webcams or that did not work. WebRTC was quite... It, it depends on the OS. The webcam has to be standardized and made compliant for the OS. If that's okay, yeah. then everything will play. Yeah. So this particular device we just showed you, for example, where it also moves around and goes to the speaker, uh, it's only about seven or eight hundred euros, uh, so that's that's nothing compared to the traditional uh, meeting room conferencing systems. There was a question. Um, um, uh, it was uh, asked many times. Well, can I use MP3 for basically to play uh, recordings because now it's unlicensed? Mm -hmm. Well, technically speaking, yes, but for the same factor as you would use uh, MP3, which needed to be decoded encoded in a format which basically we can send as an RTP strip for the world providers that you hear music on hold. You put a massive burden on your CPU, exactly. yeah, uh, which basically the gain of the size to the available storage the size cost. is, is uh, I think, a no comparison. So therefore I should recommend not to do so. Exactly. But um, as well you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, of there was a question, how do we pause recording? And it was asked uh, n uh, numerous times. Yes, um, basically, you're recording, you ha you're ha recording either starts automatically uh, directed from the administrator's settings on your extension, so each call you make or receive is recorded, or you can enable recording on the fly for per call uh, by pressing the start recording button. How to pause recording? Start, stop. Okay, yes, the UI doesn't change with a pause. It starts and stop, and then you can start again to resume and stop it again to stop it. The um, uh, one thing to say is the file remains the same, which achieves PCI compliance, and uh, you can therefore you can start and stop numerous times during one conversation. So for example, visa, visa information details come in, you will stop recording, um, the details are spoken, and then when you start recording again, you just press the start button again. The toggle remains the same. Start, stop, start, stop. Yeah. I have a question from Martin, um, basically asking a little bit how he can use his iPhone or a mobile client on the go. And while he arrives and back in the office, how he switches to call uh, to his desktop phone. Uh, I wrote uh, not long ago a blog post about what is the difference between shared parking orbits and uh, the parking places. Um, I can tell you how I will do that normally with a deck phone on my table phone, which will be exactly the same for you. Uh, on your iOS client or Android client, press the transfer button, dial star, zero, one, 
and then the coil disappears, you go to your other device, dial star 1, 0, so depending on the last number, and you will resume basically the coil on another device. Go and try it out, look for the blog post, it's a little bit explained in a bigger scale there. Excellent, yeah. I've got a question uh, about the Opus codec, whether we support the Opus codec. We don't at the moment, but we do have plans to do. Um, however, the story is a bit the same with the MP3. The Opus codec costs a lot of processing power to uh, encode and decode. So if you're going to have a cloud instance, for example, and you're trying to use a slightly smaller instance, then you're going to see that the Opus codec is going to co force you to upgrade. And basically, it's not worth it, I think, com compared to using another uh, codec, for example, like G729. Uh, but we will support uh, Opus in the next, in the coming months, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's a nice question actually coming uh, in from uh, Leon asking about the IPv6 and um, the use in the yeah. PBX. Uh, it's of course a massive uh, topic. We already contacted all our work providers if you want to yeah. put it as well in this situation. How it looks, how ready is the world for IPv6? Uh, well, it's very geographically different where Europe is still okay running mm -hmm. on IPv4. You will see that. Uh, in the States and Latin America, the usage of IPv6 uh, hit over the 40% marker. Um, we already internally made uh, all the requirements for supporting IP phones and IPv6, and the uh, iOS client uh, is already IPv6 compatible to support, uh, for example, T-Mobile in the States. And and Verizon, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going that way. Unfortunately, it's a very crafty and long way to make this design workable for everybody, dual stack, single stack, mono stack, so on. Yeah. But it's definitely something we're going to... Absolutely, yeah. Um, we have, wait a sec. I just, uh, I just update why I don't have the hotel module. I have the pro version by Bosco 122. Yes, the hotel module, when it was released, yes, it, it, it's bundled into the main TCX application. However, a new service is required, and uh, we need for this to for you to get full features, you need to take a backup, uninstall your existing version, and download 15.5 and install it. You will see the hotel module. You will see the hotel module services installed, and then PMS functionality will start to work. This is the last time you'd have to do this because any other updates will come via the updates functionality and, you'll not, and you won't need to uninstall your existing installation. Mm -hmm. But it's also uh, only on Windows because it's something to do with the Windows installer. So um, Linux users just can upgrade and will have the portal module. Uh, only in Windows your uh, reinstallation is required. Um, we've got a question, when will the Linux client arrive? Uh, for Linux, our plans are to use the web client, so we wouldn't make a native Linux software app. Um, Very often I see a question, will be there front end for the hotel uh, users, like uh, probably more or less the staff. Um, as was initially said before, just to clarify it one more time up, it will come in the web client yeah. and uh, then gives you the basic abilities for check-in, check-out in case you don't use a PMS or you want to cross-use it with your PMS and the web client. Yeah, exactly. So it has been updated on remote extension. You will instead make call or dial. Perfect question uh, from Richard. Uh, question about the CTI. Well, a requirement is that you need one of our support phones. The yeah. second requirement is that you need to have the latest firmware which we ship with 15.5 because we needed to go a huge way with our supported vendors to bring this all together for you in the update of 15.5. Last but not least, you need to use the web client over the uh, 3CX client yeah, in order to trigger your calls, start your calls or make your transfers of the calls. Once it's done, the difference between in cloud and it was one of the main reasons uh, why we decided we ditch basically the HTTP CTI and go to the little bit more complex but more reliable way of UAC STA. Um, is that the cloud or remote extension in Stun work exactly the same. So make call for those devices are not required anymore. I have a question from Daniele. I need that master contacts of the PBX sync with Google contacts. We already have this type of synchronization and we're going to expand on it when we have the CRM integration in the next upcoming version. Basically we're going to have synchronizations with Google contacts and also Office 365. They will be synced. 
they will be updated. And when a call comes in, there is going to be a mechanism where we are going to check the phone book records and match also whether the, whether, whether the incoming call is in the phone book or not. It can be there. If it's there, we'll show it. If, it's, if, if there are multiple of them, we'll choose the best one. If it's not there, we will query CRM, CRM providers. Yes, there will be Google, um, uh, Google contacts uh, synchronization. And of course, the Office 365. And of course, mentioned. Office 365, yeah. yes. Uh, does it do the applications? Do you know? Um, RITF, RITF, it's basically the question if version, version 14 what uh, projects needs to yes. be rewritten or can you just take them and run them in 15? Some, some adaption is necessary, but yes. it does um, import the basics. Yeah. It's like when you get a project from Visual Studio and you pass and you upgrade Visual Studio versions and there is that converter that comes up in the process where Visual Studio tells you, hold on a bit, we're going to start converting your projects into a new format. This is the same thing that has to be done in the VAD. You load your old VAD, um, it will find errors, it will find build errors, you will correct them, you will use the new methods and functions, and then you can build your new successful version 15.5 compliant voice app. You can get the voice application and import it to the management console via the queues, and then you can dial the queue. I've got a good question from uh, Roger Hedin from Sweden. Uh, do you have any plans to synchronize the calendar in Office 365 with the extension status? Uh, yes, we do. As we've mentioned, we have now uh, full integration with Office 365 in terms of synchronizing all the contacts, server-based. And in the same way, we're going to do server-based synchronization of the calendar uh, with 3CX. For example, for setting extension status and also showing if someone is busy in a meeting and maybe also showing that information to the reception receptionist in the future to allow easier call handling. Ah, this one, yes. Okay, um, Don Anas from TechCitters. Are you working to add additional CRMs for native integrations such as Zoho? Uh, yes, we are. Um, we're, gonna plan, we're planning to make it via the new server-side uh, architecture. So, uh, we're working on it. We're working on this. Maybe you can expand a, bit on it, a little bit on it. So, basically, currently, our CRM integration is client-based. That means yeah. that the soft phone uh, triggers a script. And with, by the way, you can uh, adapt it to any CRM with that script. However, in 15.5, the web client, it's going to be server-based. So the server will do these uh, resolutions, take the caller ID, resolve it against CRM, and then update the contact and also make a phone book contact, by the way. Now, which ones will we support? We're going to uh, support pretty much all the ones we already have. The requirement is that it has a REST API. Yeah? And when a system has a REST API, we're going to be able to easily add CRMs and we're also make, going to make an interface in the future whereby you can configure the, the REST API calls in the product and basically in that way support most systems that have a REST API. Zoho is, by the way, one of the ones we're going to be working on. It's in queue. Uh, again, it has a REST API. It has a very nice interface, actually. So give us a little bit of time, but Zoho will definitely be added. A great advantage is deployment and the way you deploy a user to use an existing CRM because as it is now client side, if you have 500 clients, you have to go around 500 times each client and configure the CRM and the admin Maybe has more work to do. You can push it out now automatically. Yes, and now with 15.5 <laughs> it's server based and you can configure it once. You can create like a sort of impersonated user account and all the updates are being sent to all users without having the binary intervention of a client needed. I've got a question from Colin Beaumont from Affinity IT Services uh, about a wallboard for outbound. That's a good question, actually. Uh, yes, we have those plans. Uh, we spent a lot of time, of course, building the web client, but now we have that infrastructure in place. We've got a, uh, a wallboard for inbound. It's quite easy for us to create additional views, such as outbound wallboard, or they're also sometimes referred to as leaderboards. And, uh, you know, we're going to be basically adding more and more views. Um, definitely a leaderboard or outbound wallboard is one of them. And we also mentioned there'll be one specifically for the hotel uh, industry. And we'll be able to make more of these wallboards for specific applications or industries in the future. I would like to make a little collector of uh, questions which come more yeah. or less all around IP phones, 3CX phones, phone books and so on. Uh, the last question comes from Sebastian, if we plan to have full phone book integrations uh, as well in IP phones. 
uh, very important currently in the ideas page, thisyx.com, uh, there's yeah. a poll where we basically listed out of support and uh, with discussions of customers and partners the top features we've been asked uh, which should be implemented. Uh, so I would request everybody go and have a quick look there and basically give your uh, opinion about it. You can leave a comment, you can uh, participate in the poll, which helps us to identify really the most common things. Uh, the phone book is something we saw in the conversation around here. Uh, it's a little bit of a task, but maybe. Yeah, it's definitely, so we're going to be doing it after this in, in, in the next month or so. Yeah, so make your voice heard about which features you like to configure. Uh, on the IP phone from yeah. the management console in yes. so There's a voting system, there's a poll. Yeah, yeah. go to thesex.com, click on top of community, uh, ideas, it's uh, stick to the top, uh, log in and uh, click on the features you want there and are, then collaborate with us what you There are some for. also good options like backlight, um, alert info, so there's a poll, please vote for it. And we're going to be looking at it, collecting information, and seeing what work needs to be done to achieve that. Transfer time. Well, overall, it should reduce the yeah. amount uh, partners needs to do over and over in uh, template customization. Um, so that there's a standard way that you can roll out 3CX and uh, bring the behavior to the customers, uh, what they like, and uh, a very easy way to configure it. Yeah. We've got a good question here from uh, Felipe Garcia from Wilson uh, Sporting Goods. And Basically, will there be a centralized admin portal for customers who have more than one install? Well, actually, that's exactly what we've been working on, and it's not just for customers, it's also for partners. Maybe you can explain a little bit more about it. Uh, the customer uh, portal, yeah, well, it's um, sort of the half replacement of the multi tenant to a certain extent. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, because if you're coming in the needs that you need to uh, manage more than just one PBX, then it becomes very complicated to keep track of all the PBXs, uh, especially when uh, the credentials of the admin console is shared. So which settings have we made? Is the PBX still running uh, in a secure manner, in a redundant manner in terms of making backups uh, and so on? So the idea is that we are building instead of one massive console which tries to deal with multiple PBXs in one, a central console where you have one point where you can administrate to a certain extent all your PBXs, you get immediately updated if there are unsecure extensions, if your PBX hasn't done backup since 8 to date, which minimum means that you don't have automatic backup schedule enabled, if maintenance uh, expires for the PBX, um, which is uh, very cheap to renew the PBX, but when it runs out, of course, then for the customer the biggest problem starts that they can't follow anymore the update track. Um, I think we're going to add a little bit more features. Yeah. Um, to the dashboard so it becomes for you the uh, resellers, administrators of multiple systems, the central point of going and uh, monitor your systems. Yeah, and you can already try that out today. Uh, you just, uh, as a partner, you have to make sure that all these PBXs are associated with your account. And as a customer, I guess you have to group them. As a, cust to... a customer at the current, we don't have the end user portal, do not have this feature yet. Okay. Uh, it's the second phase we are going to do. So if you run a big corporate uh, uh, system, um, name whatever you want, more than five installs, it becomes an interesting place as well for you to have the central yeah. uh, dashboard to do. Okay. Um, what you... There was a question here from Richard. Um, uh, will we need to update the 450.5? Do we need to update the SBC? Technically, no. Uh, the current SBC, will the, your remote office will still show up after you update 15.5. But there are some bug fixes which are made, uh, change logs will be released soon, and a new SBC version is out that mainly has some maintenance, so it would be good to update. So you'd have all your uh, components co updated to work together. 15.5 is tested with the latest SBC, so it's good to have your SBC updated. I think for you as CSTA, I think there's a requirement there are, as well. Yes, yes, there are also... Um, for some uh, phones, some, not all. Some phone, some, for some phones, some bug fixes which will help uh, fix your ACSD issues. Um, uh, maybe coming back to the customer portal yeah. for a second. Um, yeah. With the new features that uh, we have now in the management, uh, management console link and unlink, uh, which has a direct reflection to the centralized reseller portal. Uh, maybe in some cases you're taking over a customer who purchased otherwise already a 36 license and you've been tasked uh, to overtake now the support and the monitoring of that system, 
From 15.5 in the dashboard, you find like a little button to basically link your installation to uh, the reseller, and then the reseller gains basically the monitoring access for your license key. It's also something cool. Yeah, yeah excellent. Um, maybe a question about the SBC would be a good one for you. Um, do if you're going to upgrade to 15.5, do you need to upgrade the SPC as well? Oh, you can you can decide to update it, but you can uh, you can skip. It would be good to update once change logs are released because it fixes some UACST issues, which some phone manufacturers. So yes. Uh, a good question here uh, as well for the web client: uh, mm -hmm. managing of multiple phones. Uh, Best hint, go and try it, because you see now in the new web client a little icon which basically shows you which phone of yours which are registered to your extension you can drive. Um, one thing to be mentioned, only the supported phones you are able to drive on the window, uh, web client. Um, and basically you have a dedicated control which of your devices you want to trigger to make the call for you. There's a question. Yeah, five star cases, Google Firebase push. Is this applicable to Android 7? I currently have issues using GCM on Android 7. Yes, it's, appli it's, appli it's applicable to Android 7. Actually, the old GCM, Google Cloud Messaging, is, is deprecated and uh, Google has switched to the new Firebase solution, which is basically very, very efficient because it also helps developers like us get notified earlier on any crash reports. We can make stage rollouts. We can also deploy the application to a percentage of users, gaining some feedback. Firebase is extremely powerful, so we encourage, and uh, it also is backward compatible, so you have no uh, immediate rush to go and make a Firebase account. You can use your existing GCM uh, client IDs and keys. However, it, would be, it takes you 10 minutes practically. We ship a Firebase account with a 15.5 installation, but it's good to have your own. So you will go on Firebase, create an account. There are, there are three steps. Uh, and you look, um, the, the 36 management console UI is very uh, easy to understand. It tells you exactly which keys we need and which API keys you need to put and where. You need two pieces of information and uh, submit and, uh, from the, and reprovision your phones. And from that moment onwards, you won't have GCM problems anymore. So reprovision, the, maybe you forgot to reprovision the, the, your Android. So send a welcome email, uh, reprovision the phone, wait for the app to launch and then you will get Firebase push working. Uh, Nick Stemmler, I think it's already the second question I'm picking up from him. Uh, is it possible to create DAD ranges uh, in version 15? At current, not yet. But as mentioned before, the whole redesign we are going to do, so zip trans number normalization and so on, will enable us to do that uh, for you in a very easy manner. Uh, and you will just type in numbers in a standardized format all the time, and the outcome will be directly 50 DIDs in one range for you. So just to come, um, it's just a very big thing we need to get under the hood tested very well before we can give it out. Yeah, excellent. I've got a question here from Pascal Stekelenburg, out of Holland, I assume. Um, are there coming any new features to the call center module? Uh, yes, this is an area we really want to improve. Um, we see that's an, uh, a great market for 3CX. Uh, so we're going to be adding many new features. Of course, skill-based routing will be one of them. Okay, we're going to need a little bit of time to implement all of that. But now with the new architecture ready, uh, we'll have time to do such things. So yes, our call center module expects a lot of innovations coming to that in the coming six months. I got recently three times more or less the same questions regarding the upgrade from version 14. Uh, and if it's different to 15 or 15.5, no, the process is exactly the same. Uh, so you don't need to go into immediate step via version 15.0, you can go straight uh, to 15.5. Whereby actually we have never mentioned that 15.5 is the first major release which doesn't require a new installation. That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming into my mind. Uh, Life saver so, for support as well. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so uh, in, in this terms, no, the, the upgrade is the same. If you're coming from versions below of version 14, uh, check our online webinars. Uh, we updated many of them for the intermediate courses which contain upgrade and upgrades. And uh, in there you get the most information how to perform the update. Yeah. I've got a question for you, Nikki, um, from uh, Matt uh, Wachter. Um, will Yaling video phones be added to the templates? 
Short answer is yes. Also, the new models. Maybe you want to expand. Yes, on there that. are uh, some really cool models um, which we are working on right now. We're creating templates for them. Some of them are Android based as well. They're very interesting, and uh, that will be a great hit, I'm sure. And we also have the 860 as well, right? No, yes, the there, the eight, there are. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure on the exact models of the phones, but there are some cool models coming up, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Christoph Beckers, where can a reseller find a portal to view multiple PBXs? Customer.svsex.com. I explained a little bit before. Yeah. Uh, you will have uh, new tabs on the side. One is called Installs. Get your customers to 15.5 and they start reporting basic information, but most critical information about their house of the system, upgrades, expiries, extensions, security, etc. Uh, so take it from there and uh, we're going to add more and more functionality in this area so you get a central management capabilities for multiple customers. I've got a very interesting question from Christopher Kofon about uh, having meetings in-house and this links back to the question about the click to call. I think the question here is will you be able to have meetings and instead of streaming all the individual streams for, within the company to the web and back, will, will you have an, let's say an, in, an, uh, an MCU in the office? So yes, that's something that's on development. We're developing an MCU, which will be shipped with the product. That's a very unique uh, feature, and that'll allow for a lot of cool features, not only click to call, but also um, much more powerful uh, meetings uh, that you can have much more, um, uh, you can save a lot on bandwidth, and you can do a lot more moderation of meetings in-house, and also you can keep all the meeting data. You don't have to share it uh, on the internet with some cloud service, but you keep it all in-house. So that'll be very important, for example, for pharmaceutical companies, banks, and whatever they want to do, do video conferencing, but I want to make sure it doesn't get posted to the internet to one of the well-known services. Uh, Michael Roach um, just asked the questions. When I'm using the PB Express, do I need a VPN to make handsets work, or can I use the public IP and not? But this is more or less uh, a little bit the whole exercise we made with PBX Express, USC, STA, the new web client you are using, that you actually don't need VPN. Most likely phones can have VPN, it's complicated uh, to configure, so you can use them straight out of the box. So if you have singular devices in a remote location, I think the best way to use it is done because it comes directly uh, with the phone, you don't need intermediate devices in the remote location. You just plug it in, you make use of the remote provisioning service we integrated with 15.5, the phone will start up, uh, calls basically your PBX, two little informations you need to enter and it's registered. I would not add a VPN overhead because it already works without VPN, yeah. so uh, avoid it. But VPN is an option, but I think not in this, uh, course, uh, this scenario. Um, but more questions on the call center of uh, Yaroslav uh, and basically can we share something about the roadmap? Okay, it's difficult to give the exact details but as I mentioned before we're going to uh, put in a lot of features there but to give you one would be skill-based routing. Yeah, a big one and uh, that puts uh, 3CX on par with many of the uh, call center systems that will cost you two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. You'll be able to do that with the 3CX Enterprise Edition. Yeah, for a fraction of that. Layboy 1989, upgrade easy from 12.5. Easy-ish, yeah, you've left your system quite some years not updated, so we have some work to do. Um, uh, the best way is just to get back up and uninstall the 12.5, download a new version and restore it. Uh, you might have some problems because the database architecture completely changed from 12.5 to 15. In that case, you might need to install a version 14 somewhere and restore to that first, and then from there, go to 15.5. But you can do it from 12.5 directly, because it could be that you don't use most of the features required that can uh, trigger these database changes. So I would give that a shot first. Get a 12.5, take a backup, uninstall, install 15.5, restore, and see how it goes. But again, I uh, would like to direct basically some of the users to our academy, basically mm -hmm. where we answer mm -hmm. these yeah, questions as well. We have a sample upgrade. In the way, 12.5 to 15 or 15.5, uh, it will work, but for sure you will lose your call history because mm -hmm. they are in a different format. If you don't require it, be our guest. The academy is a good point. Just to remind everybody, our academy, we have the videos. Uh, you can do the test. It's completely free of charge. It's a great way to get to know the system and also something to put in your CV 
that you're familiar with 3CX. So yeah, check out the Academy and, uh, and yeah. We're currently updating, basically we had a couple of missing Academy videos, we're just updating them all. Um, I believe by the end of the week we should be completely ready and then we start basically from the beginning again for a little overhaul. Cool <laughs> something to mention is that all the new Academy meeting, uh, videos are solely made uh, out of our web meeting platform. Ah, that's a good one, yeah. Uh, Christopher Call, are you going to hide unwanted updates such as unused phone templates and SIP trunks? Yeah. We've already done this actually and 15.5 uh, already. Uh, uh, download certain uh, updates that we know you need, they download them automatically and you will not be, um, the, the counter for updates has decreased. So you're going to be, sh for example, for IP phones, if you have Yaling phones only, for example, or Snong phones only, you're going to receive updates for those phones. You're not going to receive updates for everything. So that's already done. You can, uh, it, it looks like you're running an old version. Yeah. Um. There comes a the question, is, I'm not sure how, how to pronounce this correctly. As ah, could you see? see? Elastic yeah, migration. migration. Yes, uh, we have a converter tool online, uh, which does basically the, I would say, 80% of the job for you. Uh, the only thing what you need to do is you take a backup of your current uh, Elastic system, you upload it to the service. If it's a really back, uh, big backup, we also provide the source code, what we are doing for you as a service on GitHub, so you could do it locally if you don't want to share your data. Uh, and in return, you receive a converted 3CX backup, which you can import to a 15.5, uh, including a license key at the same time. Yeah, you get also the license key for one year for the exact same number of extensions that you uh, uploaded. So it's really a good, a good thing for 3CX partners to go out to the install base and to convert people to 3CX. Um, it's easy to do and they get one year free of charge. Yeah, and then you yeah. can just run on something small like this. Yeah, and that's a good one, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's another important point. Uh, version 15.5, as we mentioned in the presentation, it works with these small uh, mini PC appliances of all the leading brands. Um, yeah, it's really a great way to deploy it for a customer that doesn't have a server. Yeah, and it's much cheaper than a lot of the proprietary PBX appliances. Yeah. Maybe very good to mention yeah. is that uh, 3CX partnered with uh, Unity, Unity Boon. Unity Boon, yeah. 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 Um, Unity Boon, yeah. yeah. So basically you can use your USB stick, you uh, download the so uh, software which basically formats USB sticks with an ISO to boot from. Uh, and uh, we are very proud that you can basically uh, select from the source of distributions directly 3CX. So you can just boot up these devices. Uh, we are certifying at the moment more and more of these devices if it works just plug and play, USB stick in and ready to go within 10 minutes. Yeah, some Intel NUCs are great with performance. They have the latest 7th generation cores, uh, processors, um, Thunderbolt, 4Ks, um, a lot of features and customization as well. They come with customization kits, add your own memory, the memory is standard, so they're really, really powerful for the space they take. No moving parts. Also SSD, no moving parts, yes, good point. Um. Do you plan the on-premise web meeting again, last no more nor? Um, it will be a hybrid on-premise sort of because the MCU okay. very soon yeah. is going to be inside the, 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 the PBX. So yes, basically um, an inbuilt web meeting integration will be there, yes. So yeah, basically our PBX will be upgraded. Uh, to not just be, it will have this basically onboard uh, web meeting feature. So every 3CX user will have on premise web meeting built in yeah. at no extra cost, by the way. Uh, well, if I'm using custom templates running version 15, I assume version 15.5 will not override them. True? True. But maybe also not true. Depends how you did it. Uh, if you basically customize the existing shipped template from 3CX, um, then with an update this would be uh, removed. I made also a blog post about it, uh, customizing templates but the right way, it's on 3CX.com. Go and have a little look on it uh, to just ensure you're using the right way if customizing of templates is needed. But depending on which integrations you need to write in these templates, join us on our uh, forum with the poll because we are going to add multiple new functions into the PBX that you may not actually require to do uh, customization anymore. Uh, yeah, precisely. Yeah. Custom templates will not be overridden because we don't want to override the changes or the countless hours that an admin has to do to make custom templates. We know it's a challenge. 
Uh, but it's good that with every version, what I would do is I would get my custom template, the one I've written. I would get the template which is shipped with 3CX and I would pass them from a converter application like WinMerge, for example, and see what 3CX engineers have added to the 3CX stock template. And then you can take parts that suits you the new variables, for example. You might have errors if you update and your custom templates remain as they are not updated because there are new variables which are added which will break some um, template generation parser in the management console. So it's a good uh, practice that when we release a new build, you compare both your, your templates. Do that, please, yes. I've got another question from Jay Kiryu about these, these uh, small mini PC appliances. First of all, I saw another question whether I should use Windows or Linux. Actually, we have a compatibility list on our website whereby we've tried to test as many as we could get. Uh, and there's also some tips there, but basically we're uh, suggesting you use 3CX, the Linux version. Yeah, it just makes updates easier. And uh, most of them will run on these mini PC appliances, but check. And then another question from Jaikiri, how much are they exactly? Well, this particular one, uh, which is uh, anyway, Intel Nook 5 CP, yeah, would have cost us about I think 180 euros, including 4 gigs of RAM, or maybe 200 euros, including 4 gigs of RAM, and... Um, 120 you remember, gigs SSD. 120 gigs SSD. So it's just 200 euros, you load up 3CX, if you're satisfied with the free version, that you get a whole uh, PBX for just 200 euros. That's a good one. Um, and maybe related to that, ISO pre-configured on Debian. Yes, our ISO is, is built upon Debian, Debian 8 to be exact. Compatible with Zotac mini PCs. Now <laughs> it is the only one which I actually didn't brought down. Uh, it's upstairs still in my office, but yes, uh, I think the model is uh, online, uh, which we tested. But uh, yes, also compatible with Zotac mini PCs. And the comment from Philippe Chino, our distributor in France. Uh, also, the Shuttle is an excellent PC and one of the earliest that we started to support. It's a, it's a great device also for 3CX uh, to run the PBX on it. Yeah. It won't go away. We're just making the pallet a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe related to that again, Raspberry, the Raspberry Pi. It's, yes, it's, 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 it's a well-known device, but don't forget the Raspberry Pi is a very underpowered uh, device. It has, a very, has very limited processing power. It often doesn't have onboard networking. So you'd save maybe 50 euros, but you're going to create a lot of problems for yourself. These devices, this is not just a no-name uh, little plastic box. This is an Intel with Intel chip inside. Um, and you basically need all that to run a reliable and good PBX. And it's going to cost you 200 euros. A Raspberry Pi with the little, uh, all the little extras you need is also going to cost you about 80 or 90 euros or dollars, whatever. And it's going to be uh, super underpowered. You can forget about running a lot of the advanced features on 3CX. And so it's much better to go for a little bit more for a quality mini PC appliance and to forget about Raspberry Pis. Nothing against them, but that's just how it is. But one of the greatest limitations till today is that the uh, LAN interface is adapted via USB. So yeah. there's a, a latency in it which we can't overcome because it's just hardware-wise. Uh, but a great question came in from Leaf. Uh, let's say I'm starting from scratch, should I take the Windows version or the Linux version for a small business below 50 users? To be honest, the answer only yourself can do. If you're comfortable yeah. with Linux, go with Linux. If you're more comfortable with Windows and you don't mind the uh, price or basically in a bundle you get the Windows license for free, then go with Windows. Um, there's no difference in the capabilities of the both products. They are yeah. the same. Oh, well, and you can switch at any point. Maybe yes. You can start with Linux or Windows, switch back and forth if you want to. Also uh, the Academy, take a backup, change, yeah. change operating system, restore it, does it works. Uh, and to add what Stefan said, uh, if you're not comfortable with Linux, you can still go for Linux because all the most important features you would need to do are already available for you to use from the management console. So, if you want to update, you can do it. If you want to check how many simultaneous calls you have, there was a question here asking me why um, there is no counter, you can from the dashboard. The dashboard gives you all the information you need. Um, where the backups are, where they're located. So then all you need to do is some basic Linux usage of how to SSH and where the files are. So it's nothing out of this world and no rocket science. So you would start from Linux, I would say. Yeah, it's free. Zara came with the question, uh, are we compatible with uh, VMware ESXi? Actually, we are certified for VMware to run on VMware. We're going to interoperability test with VMware. 
uh, so you can use it. We certified with version 15 already at the start. Much more um, hypervisors beside we had in the beginning ESXi servers and uh, the Hyper-V. We added KVM. We added Absolutely. basically all the software which basically... Virtual uh, box for, virtual testing box for testing purposes. Well, I would not run a uh, virtual box in a productive environment due to the latency and the network drivers inside of it. Um, but basically the extent of virtualization platforms, even uh, complicated tasks to manage it all the time, um, you can go. Uh, I've got a question here about the multi-tenant. Um, uh, will, from Nathan and Richard, will we have a multi-tenant system? Uh, um, no, we will not, because that we don't believe that's the future of PBX. We think PBX in the cloud will be for companies that they want to retain control, they want to have, there's a lot of advanced features going into 3CX, there's a lot of customization, we talked about a lot of the integrations, and that means having your own let's say mini PBX, not being on a system with another 500 customers and then one of them makes a mess and ruins it for everybody. We, we don't believe in that uh, because that's you have to think, you can make the analogy with the internet in the 90s where they'd have one server and all the companies were on that same, uh, had their web page together with everybody else. That's not what most companies do today. So it's the same for a PBX. We think every company, even the smaller ones, want to have a small mini PBX and that allows them to run it on these appliances, to switch to the cloud if they want, they're in full control. Um, and with platforms such as OpenStack for partners, it's very easy to manage large numbers of PBXs. So the whole multi-tenant advantage really goes away. So our strategy is um, very easy to manage, easy to install PBX, which you can put on a device in the cloud. Uh, we talked about the portal where you can manage many instances from one central place so that's our strategy not so much one computer with a lot of customer configurations on it because in our opinion that's not the right way um but one player i just forget to name by the supported hypervisor and the question came immediately is Citrix now supported yeah sensor was supported now i have to admit i don't know the version by heart uh, if it was 5 or 7, uh, but it's in the installation requirements in our admin manual where you can find a tested version for Xen. I've got a question from Christopher Edwards. If you use the PBX in the cloud, do you still need the SPC? Well, strictly speaking, it's not always required. Uh, we really work towards to, to avoid it, to, uh, uh, that it's not necessary, but in many cases it's actually quite cool. And it also saves a bit of bandwidth because you can do a bit of internal switching so it doesn't send everything to the cloud, it does it intelligently. So the SBC is uh, still handy and still recommended in many installations, but it's not necessarily required. It depends a bit on the installation. I don't know if you want to add more today, if I summarize it correctly. Yeah, well, it's, it's in, in the sum it's all there, and it's, it's like just too heavy, as it was before. So mm -hmm. it's much better. Um, the question comes over and over. Can you clarify 15.5 works on Azure? The testing has not been completed, just to... Yeah. Say, yeah. Uh, we're evaluating it for PBX Express purposes, and with this, of course, the uh, capabilities of it can run correctly on Azure, which has a lot of firewall ruling, internet network routing, because Azure is normally used on a greater scale. Uh, so I can't uh, comment on this, if, uh, or if not, that ever will come. Yeah, but if you have a machine on Azure, you can create your own machine, install 15.5, and you can test this yourself as well and see whether you're happy with it or not. So no one stops you from doing this. Just in the same way, I can have my 3CX 3.5 on Google Cloud. So it's possible to do it, yes. You can do it your own, yourself. Um, just print to PDF, just saying that the Linux version can now send reports in PDF. As, yeah, um, we've got... Yes, for the manual as well. I think it's not related. Is Bitternet Appliances? Mm. I'll do this. Ajibola uh, Alayemi, does that mean you can restore from Windows backup to Linux install? Yes. Uh, let's look at it like this. There, you can get any backup from a 15 point and restore it on a Windows or on a Linux. So you can start with Linux and uh, if you see you can't maintain right, it, yeah. uninstall, move to Windows and restore that same backup you took. Yeah. Well, I think I in general, done, more yeah. or less the, the questions repeat. Um, yeah. Um, Actually, Philip Garcia here said that he has made a test 
a bit up, um, has made a test on an Intel NUC i7, 16 gigs of memory, mirrored SSD drives with yeah. Windows 2012 R2. You put a server there, wow. Okay, <laughs> with 3CX version 15, performance was great. We, 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 know, it's, we, we know it's great, like that. i7, the latest. Uh, yeah, more. but these smaller ones also work with sm smaller processors. Yeah. Okay, um, well, I'd like to. Um, any more you want to. Any last? We can take another three questions. After that, I'd like to say that um, let's not forget about the ideas page. Uh, so you can go, log on to the forums, create an account. We try to review as many ideas as, as we can. You can vote there for ideas, you can interact with us. So if your question wasn't answered here, you can go to our forums and, and post them there. Uh, Rich Montfiri, will IP phones pop up automatically for auto provisioning when connected in version 15.5? Yes, supported IP phones. When they when they will announce them when you switch them on, they will announce themselves to the network and they will send a multicast message which 3CX will detect and will show as a new phone that can be provisioned. So you'd see that on the phones page. You'd see a black uh, line entry with your phone showing details of your phone like the Mac and the IP, and you can right click and configure them accordingly and add them to a user. I've got one question here from Martin van Kahn. Uh, will it be possible in the future to configure different holiday time plans for numbers that uh, from different countries? Well, that's quite a specific feature and our idea is basically that you'll be using the call flow designer for that. Yeah? So you already have a very powerful feature set, but we're going to be building more and more components. So that's something you'd, you'd build in a call flow designer, uh, where you can build visually most of it, of course some parameters you'd have to uh, input. And then you upload it to 3CX uh, 15, 5, and then that call flow can be triggered, yeah, based on time or number. And so these kinds of requests, these kinds of customizations, you'll make yourself in the call flow designer. Yeah. I think it's a perfect question from Rias Khan to sum it all up for today. Will that presentation be available later? <laughs> I believe so. It, will, it has been recorded and you can uh, review it at a later stage on YouTube again. Also, we're going to get these questions and we're going to review them and we're going to answer them and publish our answers online yeah. also. Um, we'll do this in the coming days. So even if we, the messages were just coming in, we couldn't keep up with them. So if we're going to, um, uh, we're going to get these online published and you get the answers from there. Okay, I take the last one, Saha. <laughs> Are the marketing materials for 15.5 updated? Uh, roughly at uh, 2 o'clock UTC time, uh, the uh, resource page in the customer portal has been updated and you'll find all the new material you need to uh, show on your website, 15.5 related uh, materials, content kit, PDF, sales documentation and so on. Oh yeah, so one more question I think because it's important to avoid. Um, is, are the Linux and the Windows versions now the same? Yes, they're the same. So you have the exact same code base, of course, compiled for Linux or Windows. That means with one configuration, you can go to Linux, you can go to Windows, you can go virtualized on your server, you can go on these machines we talked about, you can go to the cloud, you can go to a one on one you can go to OVH, you can go to Google, you can go to Amazon, you have complete control and flexibility with one configuration, and it's one code base that we can deploy to all these platforms. Yeah. Wake up in the morning and make the decision where you like to be. Yeah. Exactly. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, uh, thank you very much for all the feedback and all the questions. And um, yeah, we hope to see you again at the next release. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks.